Right guys, it's the final round of the Lands End Winter League. We're on peg 36 on the Specy Pool. Um, it's not the best peg on the, on the lake, but it isn't in the it isn't in the section with the best pegs on the lake, so it's not too bad if you know what I mean. It's kind of a I've, I've drew it before and I came second off it. I drew it earlier in the earlier in the series, but it was colder then, and I managed to sort of make up the difference with silverfish. But I'm not sure that's going to be as easy to do today. <clears throat> so as you can see, I'm starting down here in my margin. All I've done is I've found a nice bit of margin here, about two foot deep, and um, I've just put a tiny, tiny large thumbnail of ground bait in, and I've got a bit of meat over the top of it, just wait, trying to catch one fish that might come in and see the bit of meat. I've also put two nice balls of ground bait down the middle, with a very small amount of micro in, um, <coughs> and I've gone um, 14 and a half metres, wait, just at the bottom of the slope, so 16, you know, you're probably looking at 15, maybe a bit, 15 and a bit metres to get to the island, but just as you come to get to 14 and a half metres, the end of the 14 and a half metre section, it's the bottom of the far slope, so it's just... It's just starting to come up, so I thought oh, I'll put some bait in there. I feel like I'm not likely to catch a lot of carp out of this swim. I've got to try and catch a mixed bag. Right, guys, we are. Let's see what we're from it is. 40 minutes in, and uh, I couldn't catch anything down that right hand edge. So I've gone long over the maggot where I put the, a lot of maggots in. I've got a reason to be like rig on really because I just thought I'd catch anything I can. I think I'll catch F1s and cruisions and things. Uh, I've gone out there about five times and five worked in the five pots and I was like, oh, this is no good. So a couple of carp come out in the sweat in the section. So I thought, well, I've got to do something. So you can see on the end of my pole, I've got that big pot. Filled that with maggots, tapped them all in. And I've literally. Add this one straight away. Which I thought when I upped it, oh, I thought that's a nice little left one or something, but now it's not. It's a big old hippo of a carp. There's lots of them in here. At the moment, I feel like I'll be lucky if I get him out. He's not behaving himself, so he's either huge or foul locked. Time, because I don't think it's going to be a big carp bait there today. I don't need to start, you know, forcing fishing or anything like that. Been there, done that before, and it just doesn't work for you, does it? So he's holding the bottom, he's plodding along. I don't really want him where he is right now. He's right where my silverfish line is. I don't want him to go over that and disturb him in the bottom there and, you know, moving my nice neat pile of bait. But at the moment, pretty much subject or whatever. You get yours out? No, it's fucking pointy, it's power up. Was it this yeah. This is um plain lock it's foul locked if you know what I mean but sometimes the big ones do don't they? Sunshine's coming out, it's mega right, isn't it? I was freezing all day yesterday, and if it's like this today, I'd be well happy clear, dry all my tackle out from yesterday. Can't seem to get him to come in, in this boy. -o. three foot deep so when we see the rig we know he's only three foot down I think it's going to be a big fish this which I think it's got a good headband actually the last few times I've played it it feels like it's banging its head nicely it might just be a big fish hooked in the mouth see that's, that's that, that looks like a proper hook fish
fish to me. Could be hippo time this could be. Some big hippos in here. That's why they call it the specie pool. It's not really a specimen pool. You wouldn't, want, you wouldn't get specimen anglers coming to fish it, but you know. and it's much clearer but oh yeah, he's not even that big little ghosty ghosty mirror he's going to do me on this platform if I ain't careful myself six foot just because I feel like you know I've been underestimating the big fish just lately. Right guys it's uh, two hours in and I'm just in the middle of a nice little run of um, roach and f bones from over on that far bank. So Oh, not what we want. Wow, look at that. That's about the smallest fish in the lake, I think. That's what we'll do. That's what the technology is saying. We'll top up. We've not been topping up with a pot full. Topping up with like half a pot, quite a big pot. It's a bit tiny again, but that's fine. That's fine for that. shitty fish and it's not done it does it then fold over the up point I 
on a cart. Answers on a letter on a postcard too. Just a look. I'm used to these days on a family. Very busy fishing, and it's probably going to result in not winning anything. I've got to work out how to catch some carp, but I've got an art that I'm always in line, but we're not at that time of day yet. Look, now it's every ball there. That's really straight, have we lost that bit of fish? Less live than I just track the edge a little bit less. See how the pattern works on that long line, you sort of feed it and you have to wait a bit. Catch in a bit. Right guys, we're four hours in. I'm still fishing on that long line. I've been down the middle of a couple of F ones and a skimmer. Thought it might gonna happen, but it didn't quite happen, so I've come back off it. And then I've just got me second carp over the over that maggot line out there and I've just dropped another carp. Look how steady, he's sort of coming in really easy. You just really know what's going on just yet. I'm hoping I can force him in. Mm. I realise he's up. I'll do nicely. Mm. When he's gone back there, I thought we looked at him, I thought that's a carp. And then uh, and then I hooked him again. And then I started bringing him back and he was coming in like a skimmer. I'm gonna give myself five for him. Might be six, but he's a nice fish. So what I did there was just two maggots. And I fed a load of bait. And I fed a big pot on, on his head. But a big pot and nothing happened. But I was just patient. So I'm going to do is set this big pot off again for it. Just have another little couple of puts because I bet you. I 
have I run a little silver? No, and then I might switch back. Switch and put a little pot in there. Two hours to go. And if every now and again I can put a big pot in my bits and bring the, bring the proper fish into the swim like that. Catch one. And that'll be nice, won't it? I don't want to start keep big pot, big pot, big pot, well not big pot, but you know, loads of bait, loads of bait, loads of bait, and then suddenly it doesn't happen again. Tell the difference because when he was in there, I was not getting any bites off anything. And now, I'm getting a load of roach and stuff, so I do. I said I put a bite straight away for roach. Felt him, but he pulled out. I got a bite straight away. And we'll just see what's there. We'll nick a, maybe we'll nick a nice couple of nice roach or whatever, and then we'll come back. Big pot it, just let these roots clear out what bait's left. So not too much bait on the bottom. Wind's not open at the moment, there's like a crosswind suddenly got up. It's making it quite hard to present with any sort of finesse. thinking now whether I should just go over there with a the big pot. Big pot it, let it sit for a minute or two. I'll have a look down, down the middle where I've put some pellet. And then go over and look and nick another proper carp. Right there. This one's saying it's worth just catching a couple of these, just little plump little things. They clip up the silver's weight. Sometimes you'll make an F1 as well. And the more bang this is even draw on a car. Okay. I'll just keep shipping them with this day on, which literally 99% of them have. And with the barbler suck on. Rick went and had a pole there, sorted it. Just trying to be too quick again. I just try, sometimes I try to fish too fast with these silvers. Slow down a bit. Somewhere right on there, it's like quite hard. Yeah, it's, the rig's moving through it, stupid now. See ya. Mm. Let's see, that's the way to get it. Sort of screwed itself in, lad. Oh, 
don't know what to do really. And this is the line I've caught most of my fish off. With the exception of maybe two or three F1, two, I think two F1s and a, no, an F1, a cruise unit and a skimmer from down the middle. Everything else has come off this line. This thing that time was a bit slow there. There's another roach there. Well, that's, that's literally just vanished in front of my eyes while I was trying to get my pole in position. Missed it. It's interesting, you know, this float did not move for minutes. That carp was in the swim. This is not a... I'd say it's not a roach, could be an F1, but it might. I think it's probably an F1, it could be a carp. I think it's an F1. This is what I'd say, I think if I'd have refed it, I'd have missed these fish. It's just how it's been today. He's a tenchy, look, there you are, little tenchy. He's a very delicate bite, he was. There he is. I was grabbing with a net these tents because it's impossible to hold. In the back in the lake. That's why we call them little bars of soap, because that's what they are. Well, that's what I call them, a little bar of soap. He's a little bit bigger than a bar of soap, yeah. The uh, wheels have somewhat come off. So, I've gone down that right edge, and I've actually had one in that four, four pounder under me, but I can't get another bite down there. Seems to be roach just pestering me. I've topped it up and tapped in bits of meat and put some, put some ground bait in there, see if I can draw a fish in. But, yeah, right in the meantime, I've been putting both of these magic lines, which may have ruined them. I've also gone up to a bigger hook also may have been a mistake but at this point I can try and catch some better fish. So I'll put a bigger hook on so I can put a bigger bunch of maggots on because obviously there's a lot of maggots in the swim now. So I feel like I need a stand that up bait sort of put a bigger hook on. Also I know then if I look a bigger fish I can pull a bit harder the last half hour and try and land it quickly and get another one. If that makes sense, a little indication then. but nothing to show for it. Uh, I've been putting the long line as well so I can always go have a quick look on that one. Chance of a, you know, caught from somewhere. I feel like the chance of winning the Lake Silvers is gone because Peg 36 next to me is just literally, he's had a right run of skimmers for an hour and a half. Proper two or three pound fish. I actually think he might be close to his net limit. He, he doesn't seem to think so. Yeah, we've got about eight minutes left. Let's just go down the edge and see if we can make one. I don't think it's going to make a fat lot of difference to the day. But we never know. I'll put a piece of meat on. Three bits of meat. Make it quick. We're going to lose them now because we haven't taken the pole apart. I'll take you four out and three bits of meat. Let's see if I can get away with it. We got one. Well, that was a 
a good decision then, wasn't it? As long as we land it. Feels like a heck of a fish at the minute. To be fair, we want it to be as big as possible because I don't think we're going to get a chance of another fish after this. This will be our fourth carp of the day. We might end up with, we might squeeze out like 20 pound a carp. This one goes, it feels heavy. But then, you know, they always feel heavy. We've got four minutes, so we'll probably take us four minutes to land this fish, probably. I'm not going to rush it, because I don't see the point. It's massively unlikely for me to walk another fish. To, even, if I, even if I landed this now, it would be massively unlikely for me to hook another fish in the next four minutes. So It's much better that I'll make sure I get this in, even though it's probably not going to make any difference to the results. Cause I feel like other people in my section have caught more carp than me. Other people in my section have caught more silvers than... Oh, no, I'm not sure about silvers. I might have the silvers in my section, but it, it's silvers on the lake. I'm pretty convinced that Vince next to me, the amount of skimmers he's had recently. He's had lots of skimmers, lots of F1s. He thinks he's got £20, pound, £25. Pound. I think he's got like £35, nearly £40 pound, I think he's got. But, you know, I've been wrong before. This seems to be fighting weird, like it could be hooked in the tail. Want to be turned around. There's the space and a lot of water, which is usually a sign that it's hooked in the tail, unless it's an absolute hippo to any part of the bottom. I think it is. Let's just get him to come to us rather than keep lifting him up. Very good way to play a fish really like that, but just the way he's how hard he is to get into makes me feel like he could be up in the bum. Size fish, I think. I feel like I've ever got his head facing me. And that's foul, look, this fish is. Bikes down there. I wonder whether or not there's been a few carp in there and I've been not where, you know, I've not been where their heads are, if you know what I mean, I've been where their tails are perhaps. I don't know with these fish. There's a ghost up somewhere towards the back end. Fish on!
Well done, Vince. Reckon you got the silvers easy, mate. I didn't get the silvers win in the end, sadly. Um, although that was the only thing I could fish for, the guy next to me did beat me with his knots. I'm going to skim as well done to him. Um, I, did, I have managed to get the silvers four out of six rounds in this league, and that just shows the sort of pegs I have. I've sort of had to focus on silvers because I feel like I haven't drawn many pegs that I could catch carp from. The only peg I've drawn that I could have caught carp from has ended up being my dropper because I blew it on peg 33. See you again soon, guys.